Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks uh, for attending the Sensorion presentation. I'm Nawel Uzren, I'm the CEO of the company. So here is the disclaimer because uh, Sensorion is a um, public company we listed on the French Euro Next Growth Market. So Sensorion, it's a clinical stage biotech company that is specialized in the development of hearing loss therapeutics. When you're thinking about uh, hearing, obviously, this is a therapeutic area where today, very unfortunately, there is no drug that has been approved you know, for efficacy. So uh, we are building a comprehensive product portfolio, and uh, the focus today is going to be about our gene therapy portfolio that is currently in development with one of the top academic institutions driving the science of hearing. This is Institut Pasteur, I don't know if you knew, but they are behind the identifications of the genes that cause actually congenital deafness, but they did not stop there. They, they also started developing gene therapy programs. Uh, beyond that, we also have some small molecules, but I, I won't be uh, discussing those today. Um, so the company was created in 2009, and uh, since then, you know, we've been successful in actually bringing on board, you know, uh, great investors that are long-term and who are supporting the company, and in particular, Invus and Sofinova and Fidelity, among others. So a little bit uh, a description about the inner ear. So if you look at the cartoon here on my left, you know, in blue, what you can see, this is the inner ear. This is very small organ, it's very delicate, and it's not very easy to access. If you look at the cartoon in the middle, what you can see, this is a zoom of the inner ear. And you have two distinct pieces. This three-dimensional piece that you see at the top, this is what we call the vestibule, and the vestibule is responsible for our balance. And then at the top, at the bottom, the snail shape, this is what we call the cochlea, and the cochlea is responsible for our hearing. What's very unique about the cochlea is that we are born, we have a, a very limited number of sensory hair cells. Only 3,500 of what we call inner hair cells, every single one of them is tuned to a specific frequency. This is the reason why we love music. This is the reason why we can actually recognize the voices of our beloved ones. And we are born also with only 12,000 outer hair cells, which are like amplifiers of the sounds. And unfortunately, these cells, they do not regenerate. So once we lose them, we lose the ability to hear in these specific frequencies. And that's the reason why you see, unfortunately, these numbers at the bottom of the page. They were just published by the WHO. And today, there are almost like 500 million people who are suffering from what we call handicapping hearing loss. And unfortunately, this number is going to continuously increase because today, the way we live, we are constantly exposed to noise. You know, we all have our earplugs for multiple hours listening to music or being on calls. And unfortunately, this accelerates the death of the sensory health cells. So the reason why we decided to embark our journey in gene therapy is that when you look at the causes for hearing loss, actually 50% are due to, congenital, to genetic defects that you could potentially you know, uh, use gene therapy. And the reason why we think gene therapy is a very elegant approach for the inner ear is really due to the fact that there is a very limited number of cells that you need to transduce, and these cells, they do not regenerate. So what we expect is that the, the effect will be durable over time. So what we did also um, around the years is really surround ourselves, we know, with um, the top, I would say, KOLs or academic institutions that would help us bring, you know, the community with us. Because as I was saying today, when you're thinking about hearing care, the way we treat it is with hearing aids or cochlear implants for the most severe. There are no drugs. So we started our journey with Institut Pasteur for the science, you know, for the understanding of the biology, but we did not stop there. So since 2019, we are actually partnering with uh, the biggest pediatric hospital in Europe. This is uh, Necker Hospital, which is based in Paris. And we are working with them on what we call a natural history, where um, since 2019, now we are systematically genotyping every single child being born deaf, so that we can identify the genetic mutations. And we are following up these children a long time so that we can see actually what's the evolution, you know, in terms of biomarkers and um, understanding of what could be a great primary endpoint for our clinical, future clinical trials. We're also working with the French military because uh, obviously, you know, military personnel, they are particularly exposed to noise. Um, so we're working on them on a clinical study to actually um, treat noise-induced hearing loss. 
And um, we've been approached actually by some of the top players from the field, like the med tech companies that are either selling hearing aids or cochlear implants, and we're working with them on natural histories and also on drug device combination. So this is the visual illustration of our uh, pipeline. The most advanced one is actually a small molecule uh, investigated in, as you can see here, in three indications. Uh, we have had like some very compelling results. And what you can see at the bottom of the chart in dark blue, this is our restore uh, side of the portfolio. This is our gene therapy pipeline. The first indication is um, for the restoration of a protein called autoferlin. Autoferlin is a very important protein for uh, the good uh, functioning of hearing. Uh, we are actually now moving full speed ahead, uh, executing our talk study to file our CTA in the uh, beginning of next year. The second indication is uh, actually more, more severe. The babies are born bilaterally deaf. They are also uh, suffering actually from uh, vestibular dysfunction. The parents notice that they are delayed in uh, learning to walk. And uh, unfortunately, they also become blind uh, during childhood. So these children are deaf, they are blind, and they suffer very serious uh, balance issues. And we are actually working with Institut Pasteur on developing some gene therapy programs that uh, hopefully can correct the balance uh, dysfunction and also the hearing uh, loss. And the last one is uh, um, actually the biggest cause for congenital deafness. That's uh, what we call the DJB2 gene-related hearing loss. And interestingly enough, uh, this gene is involved in actually three types of uh, hearing uh, disorders, two forms of pediatric, biggest cause of con for congenital, but also development of progressive hearing loss during childhood. And interestingly enough also, um, there are adults, by the age of 30, they start suffering like very severe hearing loss and they become completely deaf by the age of 45. And if you genotype them, they have a specific mutation of the GJB2 gene, which is actually monogenic. So we are also interested into that indication. So um, I'm going to show you some of uh, the preliminary data that uh, actually we published with Institut Pasteur. It's regarding our autoferlin uh, program. So autoferlin is a protein that is being expressed in the inner health cells. You remember when I told you we are born with only 3,500 in our health cells, every single one of them is tuned to a specific frequency. This is where the autoferlin is being expressed. So obviously, like every single one of us that are trying to develop gene therapy programs, the first one is you know, make sure we select a capsid that is specific for the target cells. And that's what you can see at the bottom left of, uh, of the chart. So obviously, we selected our capsid with a mouse model and also with non-human primate model. And what you can see here is that we are selectively transducing the inner health cells and not the outer health cells. So that was, okay, check number one. Second is like, okay, now that we transduce the target cells, are we actually expressing autoferlin? And that's what you can see on the right top of the slide. So um, the first part of the pictures, that was actually uh, the uh, control mouse, and we actually injected um, the gene therapy with PBS in the knockout mouse, and you can see here it's completely dark, no autoferlin being expressed, and the other part of the picture you can see in blue um, the expression of the autoferlin in the inner health cells. So that was okay, second check. Then it was like, great, we can express this protein, but is it functional? And that's what you can see at the bottom of the chart. And the way we do that is uh, with um, what we call an auditory brainstem response test. So what we do is like we actually measure the electrical brain activity of the mouse once you apply different sound levels. So starting from zero up to 120 decibel. Just to give you a frame of reference, 120 decibel, is, it's like you would be at uh, the airport of Barcelona when a, a plane is taking off. It's actually pain level. So you can see in red, the knockout mouse is completely deaf. Even though you know you have a sound at that level, nothing happens. In green, this is what would happen you know, for a wild type mice. You can see actually a brain activity happening between 40 to 60 decibels. So that's probably the sound of my voice as I speak right now. And in purple, this is what happened after one single injection. So it's a local injection in the knockout mouse. And you can see that we've been successful in restoring actually hearing at the level of the wild type. And uh, 
what was also very impressive is that these results were durable over time, up to 56 weeks. So that's what we published with Institut Pasteur, and that's the program that we are currently progressing to actually file an IND uh, beginning of next year. So these are additional data for the non-human primate, uh, showing actually the selective uh, transduction of the inner hair cells. It's very important because uh, uh, we know that for specific indications, if we start expressing proteins in cells that usually don't see it, that would be actually counter um, uh, defeating actually the purpose because we, we would start actually losing hearing. So to summarize, uh, this is our most advanced program with an expectation to file an IND beginning of next year. For Usher syndrome type one, we are actually fine tuning our proof of concept data in more macho mice, and we are going to publish those actually mid-year. And for the bigger scores for congenital deafness, G the GJB2 gene therapy programs, we are actually uh, going to select our candidate that will be undergoing IND preclinical studies uh, by mid-year. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions you know, the, during the breakout. Thank you for your attention.